Russia obsessed Western elites acting like delinquents. Kremlin. Some Western leaders are so obsessed with sticking it to Moscow that they're behaving like delinquent youths who have no regard for the consequences of their actions, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov has said. He made the comment in an interview with TASS during which he discussed the poor state of US-Russia relations. Washington and its allies are prepared to balance on the edge of direct armed conflict with us, even though it undermines their national security, he added. There are plenty of people among those in power in the US and other key Western states who are de facto provocateurs. They've made testing Moscow's resolve the goal of their existence, Ryabkov said. Such individuals are political bullies, he added, describing them using a Russian term for delinquents and members of teen gangs who reject any kind of rules. They are preoccupied with crossing any red line drawn by Moscow, regardless of the risk of this brinkmanship, said the minister. Americans in particular seem to be hell-bent on irritating Russia, he claimed. As they please their own geopolitical notions, they bring closer to the phase in which holding control of events and preventing a catastrophic collapse would be very difficult, said Ryabkov. They live in a bubble and do not perceive outside signals that go against their preconceptions. The Russian diplomatic corps is therefore severely limited in how it can interact with Western governments, particularly those of NATO countries, he stated. What is happening in the Western direction is currently the job of the military and security officials. Diplomacies work there, I would say, in a crisis management mode aimed at preventing an escalation into a really massive conflict, Ryabkov said. The US-led bloc is a group to which we feel not an ounce of trust, which triggers political and even emotional rejection in Moscow. This entrenched hostility is one of the reasons why claims that Russia could interfere in the US presidential election in November make no sense. According to the minister, he compared such statements to a vinyl record so overused that it can only produce noise when played. As a matter of fact, it is irrelevant for us who the next US president will be, he explained. No chance for the improvement of the situation can be seen considering the fundamental anti-Russian consensus of the American elites. The Ministry of Defense of Russia reported that it shot down 108 Ukrainian drones, 51 of which were over Crimea, 44 over the Krasnodar territory, 6 in the Black Sea, the same number over the Belgorod region and one over the Kursk region. If Russian military data is correct, this is likely the largest number of drones fired into Russian-controlled regions in one night. As a result of the attack, problems with light began in Sevastopol, and the Twops oil refinery also caught fire. As a result of the attack in Crimea, the Sevastopol electrical substation was damaged, said Sevastopol Governor Mikhail Razvoziev. According to him, while repairs are underway, the city will face power shortages and spot blackouts. Therefore, the authorities cancelled classes in schools and secondary specialized educational institutions, and also stopped the work of kindergartens. In addition, the NetBlocks monitoring service has recorded serious problems with the internet in the city. In the Krasnodar territory, the Twops oil refinery was attacked. The regional operational headquarters reported that a fire broke out at the plant, but it was contained. There were no casualties. The Astra Telegram channel, citing local residents, wrote that the port in Novorossiysk was cut off from power. A resident of Novorossiysk said that he heard more than 30 explosions during the night. In the Belgorod region, a drone attacked a car in the village of Oktyabrsky, said the regional governor, Vyacheslav Gladkov. As a result, a woman and a four-year-old child died. The last massive drone strike took place on April 27 and was aimed at the Krasnodar region. Then, according to the Russian Ministry of Defense, the region was attacked by 66 UAVs, and the work of the Slavyansk oil refinery was partially stopped. The latest shelling may indicate an intensification of Ukrainian air attacks on Russian regions and Crimea against the backdrop of Russia's offensive in the Kharkov region.